my friend, and welcome to my first ever Chomp Down Review Christmas episode. Please just use a mental block to substitute whenever I say Christmas for whatever holiday you celebrate. That's just the one I'm comfortable with, so that's the one I'm gonna roll with. It has been almost a year since I started my channel on YouTube, and the very first movie I reviewed was a movie that I absolutely loved, so I really wanted to end my first year in the same way. And I had really hoped to get this video out before all the Star Wars hype kicked in, but since I wanted to make my last real review of 2016 about a real quality movie that deserved it before my best and worst of the year come out, I knew a Rogue One review wouldn't satisfy me. Oh! Screw it, because I really want to chomp my teeth into a holiday movie. But I have to admit, after sitting through the same movies for 25 days of Christmas for 21 years, it's not really fun looking back on these movies anymore. They're all kind of bad. Even the claymation ones, when you start thinking about them, sometimes they're just about, like, bullying. So I want to do something a little different than your normal Christmas movie, but still good for the whole family. I think I picked the perfect one. Gremlins. Yeah, I know. It's one of the best. But before I get too into it, I might get a little harsh with this movie, and if this is one of your favorite movies that you think is untouchable, no movie is untouchable and no movie is perfect. This movie is one of my favorites too, so please keep that in mind. I know some people are going to watch this review and think, Gremlins Christmas, but as soon as you start the movie... <laughs> For Gremlins, Christmas is more of a backdrop than what the movie is all about, but it being Christmas time really adds to some scenes. Billy, we're. Do you hear what I and for others, it's completely crucial. For one scene in particular. Spoilers for the record if you haven't seen this movie that is over three decades old, well. I don't know what to tell you at this point. And instead, they pulled out my father. He'd been climbing down the chimney on Christmas Eve. He slipped and broke his neck. Died instantly. <laughs> Yikes. So there is no denying that Gremlins is a Christmas movie. A horrifying gore-filled family classic. That's funny, you know, because I always thought everyone was happy during the holidays. Well, everybody else is opening up their presents. They're opening up their wrists. The first time that I saw Gremlins, I put it in, I finished watching it, and I restarted it over and over and over again enough times that it probably killed the movie for the rest of my family. Sam, I'm sorry, I really hope not. But I love this movie. There's something about the era of which that this movie came out, which I feel you really couldn't reproduce in 2016. Now, it's kind of hard to even tell you that a kid could watch this movie, but I watched this as a kid, and I wasn't grossed out by it, even though the fact that it gets seriously gory. When Steven Spielberg got involved, apparently he changed it from a straight-up horror movie into a family friendly movie. I'm assuming it was his decision to change the blood from red to green in Gremlins. The green is gross, but if it was red, these scenes would be completely different, and a lot of the scenes really are scary. It does kind of feel like it takes a while to get to the Gremlins introduction, and at that point on it takes a completely new life of its own. But the first big chunk of the movie that takes place with Billy and his family in 2016 takes so long to get through because it feels like so many other movies, but the fact that Gizmo is as adorable as he is does keep you pretty entertained, because I feel like a lot of the other things going on really start to distract me in this movie. And we'll get to those things in a second, but can we just talk about how much money Gizmo Toys must have made over the years? Like Gremlins Toy, sure, but you think Baby Groot's gonna make a lot of money this year? Just imagine how much money this adorable little dude has gotten over all the years. He's like the adorableness of Baby Groot in the body of an Ewok. And Ewok's cuteness destroyed the Star Wars finale. So Gizmo's kind of off the chart. <laughs> our story. Phil Dad here is looking for a gift for his son in Chinatown for some reason, while trying to pawn off one of his many failing inventions. That's when he decides that he has to have this little alien creature played by Howie Mandel in his life. I, I don't know. But don't we all feel like we need a little Howie Mandel? First question, how we doing? <laughs> But why does he need to have it? I mean, I, I don't know, because he's an inventor, I guess? The term gremlin came around to be a silly scapegoat when things, mostly machines, wouldn't work. Mr. Murray, one of the family's neighbors, even mentions that when he was in the army, they would blame gremlins when their planes malfunctioned. You got you gotta watch out for the foreigners because they plant gremlins in their machinery. So, in a way, it's like this guy's life is already infected with gremlins. But through some shady back alley deals with a 12 year old, even though it's clear the old fella inside didn't want to sell his pet, with more quiet comes much responsibility. I cannot sell him at any price. This fella finds the perfect way of passing on his gremlin infection onto his son. And man, does his son Billy not deserve it. We quickly learn that Billy here is the worst. Granted, his father is a failure and his mom is clearly depressed, but it's kind of impossible to tell how old this kid is. He works at a bank, lives in his parents' attic, and goes to high school only when he wants, where his only two friends are a much younger than him, Corey Feldman, starring in classic films like Goonies and Stand By Me, far before any the of this stuff. he did right here on today, just a few weeks 
to go. Corey and his band. And a science teacher who not only believes in harsh oh, animal experiments, oh, good, good, oh, but keeps a lethal injection lying around in his classroom. Uh, Billy is given three rules. No sunlight for Gizmo or he'll die. Don't get him wet and don't feed him after midnight. And even though we don't know the consequences of the second two rules, Billy still carelessly breaks them. If someone told me the first of three rules would result in a death for this little guy, I could only imagine what would happen if I broke one of the other two. Here we go. Then maybe you guys would be quiet. But not only does Billy carelessly break them constantly, which causes Gizmo intense physical pain, he barely even cares. He's way more interested in these little fur balls than Gizmo screaming right there. I think he's been hanging out with his sicko teacher a little too much. This kid is messed up. But after Gizmo gets wet and these little fur balls that pop out turn into actual new mogwais who Gizmo is a terrified of. They tricked Billy into letting them slime all over chicken a little too late. Oh, but there was like 20 minutes left before midnight, Mom. Oh, no. So breaking the second rule makes Mogwais duplicate, but breaking the third rule turns Mogwais into unholy goblin creatures. Okay. <laughs> well, well, what happens if you if you get wet after you turn into a gremlin? Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. These little critters look so good. Each of them look really similar, but just a little bit different from each other. They don't all have personalities yet. The look of their cocoons are clearly inspired by aliens, but the hatching scene is so cool. Yeah, this movie came out far before CG could make physical effects look more seamless, but everything in this movie still holds up. There's a great blend of puppetry and stop motion that really works out, and the way that they combine the humor into how low-key terrifying they are is incredible. And now that we're into them destroying the town, it's theory time. Remember when Gizmo was terrified of these other Mogwais? Why? Why wasn't Gizmo just happy to be a mama of five new adorable little Mogwai? Maybe Gizmo knew what would happen. What was this guy's deal? I mean, maybe he didn't want to sell Gizmo just because he loved his pet, but maybe it's something more sinister. I mean, what if the Japanese had used gremlins as a weapon against people like Murray in World War II? What if this fella here, who was clearly in rough shape, Maybe he happened to survive some sort of monstrous explosion that destroyed his entire country and ended World War II? Being far enough away from a nuke to survive but still see it can cause you to go blind. And maybe after surviving something so horrible, he was so determined to seek revenge that he took his own weapon of mass destruction, disguised as an adorable little alien thing, and made his way to America, maybe to destroy a small town someday. And then, maybe he had a change of heart, abandoning his ideas of revenge and committing himself to keeping his own weapon safe until some portly man comes in and, and takes it from him and releases it onto a small town. Or maybe I'm just looking way too much into this. But that's just a theory! <coughs> Either way, it's one of the many bits of the Mogwai gremlin lore that sucked me into this as a kid. The rules, the responsibility of friendship, and the result of messing up even a little bit being a horde of little green monsters I was gonna have to deal with, and the implications of them maybe having an impact on history. The storytelling here is top notch, and this movie's great at not only foreshadowing what's gonna happen, but in the setup, it introduces you to a bunch of characters you'll see get terrorized later. And they have a great way of using unrelated conversation, usually coming from a screen nearby, to give you information on what's going on. If we're all being honest though, the best part of the movie is the climax, when Billy commits mass gremlin murder and takes them all out, well, the same way that the inglorious bastards killed Hitler. But they deserved it for the horrible way they treated Gizmo, like the sickest part of this movie is the horrible things they do to that little guy. When the sequel comes around, Gremlins becomes a parody of itself, relying mostly on jokes, but some scenes from this first one are so bleak, it's great including this last scene that really brings people from all over the town together somehow, where you see the head gremlin spike get melted by the sun while duplicating in a fountain? Dude, it's freaking gross. While Gremlins might not be the most Christmassy holiday film or the scariest critter movie, Gremlins is an incredibly fun movie to experience. And while it might not always be good for kids, it might ruin some things for them, it doesn't really alienate anyone because once Gremlins infects somebody, they're gonna bring the whole town down. And that would be a complete failure if I didn't mention how incredibly some sci-fi references are intertwined in the story. There's constantly references in the background, cameos from amazing creators like Chuck Jones and Spielberg himself. So if you're a big nerd like me, that just adds one more thing to this movie to love. I love Gremlins. I give it a solid 9 out of 10. And I suggest that you give it a chance and throw it into your holiday mix-up this year. Well, except for saying that I have thought this was the worst line ever written since I was like 12 years old. That's Stripe. He's the leader. I guess that's really all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and especially if you've been with me this whole year, thank you so much. 
A lot is changing about YouTube's algorithm right now, so videos that don't get a lot of likes, comments, shares, and interactions in general don't really do very well. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below, and let me know what your experience with Gremlins is. Whether it's a new or old favorite to you, or if you completely disagree. If you want to help support my second year, you can check out my Patreon, but that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you with my best and worst of the year. Ooh, that's gonna be some work. Goodbye, friends, and we'll chomp down again soon.